Greetings and welcome back to our introductory SOLIDWORKS tutorial. We are building a saw here. We have already built the saw handle and also the saw blade and the rivet. Today we're going to put them all together. First though, I wanted to show you that I was moving these things around and going from one file to the other by clicking on Window. Now, in your version, you might wonder where File, Edit, View, and so on are. Well, I have it defaulted to have these pinned up here. So if I unpin them, they disappear. And where do they go? They go right over here where that little triangle is next to the SOLIDWORKS logo. And if I click on that and come all the way over here to the pin, then it will stay there for the duration of your session. So I highly recommend doing that. One of the very first things you do when you open up SOLIDWORKS to begin with. Uh, that will show a variety of other options beyond the buttons that you have here. Make sure you do that now to show all of these parts at once, I can go to Window and I can tile them horizontally or tiling vertically. And this can be a, a great help and we'll, I'll show you how to take advantage of that in a second. So we're going to put these all together in an assembly. So I'm going to go up here, going to make an assembly from the part and hit OK. Now you should probably save this right off the bat but uh, I'll skip that and I'm going to go back up to this window and I'm going to tile horizontally. So now you can see I've got my assembly that I'm working on here and I've got my three parts here. Well I'm going to start off with the saw handle so I can just click on that just one left click and then I can bring it in here. If I just click one more time right there, it brings it right in. Now notice this little F here. That means it's fixed. So if I right click on it, I can change it to float, which means that I can move it around. If I hit undo, it'll move it back to that spot. Notice that minus sign means that it is not uh, fixed. It means it's floating. I can go back to fixing it. Now I could make it float and then align it with different parts, for example the front, top, or right plane of the assembly. The assembly comes with those as well, but for now we'll just keep it fixed as it's our first part. Why they chose fixed and float, both of which begin with F, I do not know. It's going to show you one way of inserting components and then I'll show you another way of inserting round components. So I'm going to click on insert components. Don't blink because it goes pretty fast. I'm going to click on the saw blade and I'm just going to click right there. And now this saw blade has that little minus sign so that means that it's floating all over the place. I can move it in any uh, direction. I can rotate it to in under the right conditions. Notice how these two came in roughly at the correct orientation. That's because I thought about it ahead of time. I used the same front face as this as would align with the front uh, plane of that. So that's why uh, it's really important to think well down the road ahead of time before you start just uh, clicking things because now it's going to be really easy to align everything. For any object in space it has uh, six degrees of freedom. We can translate it up or to the right or to the side. So six degrees of freedom um, there we go back and forth here back and forth here, up and down here. That's just in translation. Then there are 
um, rotating about each one of those axes as well. So three translation, three rotation. So when you want to get your object fixed so that it's not moving, you have to take care of all of them. That doesn't mean you need six mates or six ways of connecting them. Some can take care of one, two, three, four, five, or even all six degrees of freedom, depending on what you use. Now, for this, we are going to want to align these holes. Well, sometimes it's hard to click on the holes or know what you're clicking on. I'm going to show you uh, something called View Temporary Axes, and that will bring up these axes. See this blue line here? And there's another small one right here that goes for this hole. So I'm going to make sure those are set up to be aligned. So I'm going to mate that with that. Oh, I picked the wrong one. See over here, this shows you what you picked. And I picked the face of the saw blade. So I'm going to delete that. I'm just going to click on it, delete it. And now I'm going to try to uh, pick the axis again. There we go. So now the axis of this and the axis of the other are aligned. So those two lines will always be right in the same line. Now that you see how this is rotating and moving all over the place, well, we'll take care of that in another second here. We're going to mate that axis. Oh, see, I picked the face again. Click and delete that. I'm going to try to get that axis. There it is. So I see the axis there. And then there we go. So I've got the two axes together. And so now to show you what you did. Okay, those two are always going to be on their respective axes. And there's not much more I can do. So now it's only moving back and forth. It has lost five degrees of freedom. It can only translate back and forth now. It can't rotate. It can't do anything else. So all I need to do is establish one more constraint so that it is uh, fully inserted into the handle here. So I'm going to go back to mate and this time I'm not going to use any of the things that I made. I'm going to go back to how I planned it out to begin with. If I click on these plus signs I can see all the features that are in each of these models including our original plane. So our front plane was the one we used for both of them. And remember we used the mid plane setting for the extrusion. Well, that's so that this front plane would always be right down the middle. We wouldn't have to make a whole new plane. Somehow I selected that face from the other one. I'm just going to use the front plane of the blade. And if you'll notice, it went right down the middle of the handle. Easy as pie if you set it up from the get-go. One more thing is a little bit of a problem. Not sure if you noticed this, but notice right here we actually have interference. I didn't design it right. Either the slot is too small or our blade is too big beyond the, the holes. So, uh, but that is exactly the whole point of being able to see these things so that you can see that it's going to uh, interfere well before you actually make any parts. This is a cheap fix. So let us modify the design just a little bit. I'm going to right click on the handle. In so doing, I can do all sorts of things. It brings up a lot of possibilities. But in this case, I'm just going to open the part and we come to the handle. I'm going to double click on this and we're at 1.125. I'm going to make it 1.15. I think I should do it. And 
I'm going to rebuild it and go back to my window, go to my assembly. Yes, I would like to rebuild the assembly. And now I have a little gap. In fact, I can double click it here too. Oh my goodness, I'm back into millimeters on this. So I'll go back here, inch pounds, there we go. And maybe one, one point one four. You don't want it right up at it because you'll want a little bit of space to make sure this can get in. So that seems to be enough of a gap. If I wanted to measure the gap, I could do that. I can go up to Tools, Measure, and I'm going to measure from this face to this point here. Gives you even the delta, delta X, Y, and Z. Okay. Now for the rivets. Let's go to Window, Tile Horizontally, and I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to take this rivet, and I'm not even going to go into uh, Insert Components. All I need to do is click on this rivet and drag it. So I haven't let up on my left button. I'm going to drag it right here. Now, see that symbol? Looks like two cylinders. I'm going to release, and my rivet got into this hole. Unfortunately, I wanted to have the uh, head on this side. So all I have to do is click this button here, flip mate alignment, and it did. This wasn't as nice as I'd like it, but we'll see. I'm going to click on it and drag it out a little bit. There we go. I'll show it to you again with the other one. I'm going to click, hold, drag. and see how those things come up there and switch the alignment there we go and there's a green check mark and now those were in didn't have to do any other clicks just the click and drag and maybe changing the alignment now all i need to do is mate that with this face and mate this face with the bottom of the rivet there. And that's all there is to it. Now, if I don't want these axes laying around, I can turn them off so I get rid of those temporary axes. I can turn this around. Now, it was asked if this is okay or if we're going to do anything over here. I would expect a machine to come and smash the rivet down. And uh, we, as mechanical designers, don't have to do any more with that at the moment. And there is your assembled saw. In this video, we started out with the parts that we needed. We assembled the handle in a fixed fashion into the assembly. Then we opened up the blade and did one, two, three mates to make sure that it ended up where it was supposed to. We looked at the interference that occurred here. We were able to change the dimensions in the part file, but then we saw that it would update here in the assembly, 
And then we could also change it in the assembly. We looked at how we can measure. And then we installed the rivets in a slightly different fashion, simply from dragging from the part window into a fitting cylindrical feature in the assembly. And we did that twice. We had to rearrange them a little bit, but it saved a few clicks and was a pretty nice way of doing things. Well, I hope this helped, and I look forward to showing you some more advanced techniques in the near future.